Have you ever been ripped off in a trade before? And during that trade, no one's really speaking to you. All these bystanders kind of lining up waiting for their turn to, you know, have a shot at your card. And no one's really telling you anything until after the fact, once the trade is complete, they come up to you and tell you, hey buddy, you've been ripped off. See, that has happened to me before. And to be honest, that feeling sucks. And I hope no one else has to go through that ever. Now, speaking of trading, there seems to be a lot of unspoken rules during a trade. And what are, what are some do's and don'ts during a trade? Well, that's what we're gonna dive into in today's video. And in this video, this is going to be the unspoken rules and ethics of a trading in a trading card game. Now before I get into this video, there's two concepts that I believe in. First one is supply and demand. Just note that as long as there's high demand for something, the price will go up. The second thing is mutual satisfaction. As long as both parties are happy at the end and both parties are knowledgeable of what they're trading away, and uh, one party does not mind paying a little extra due to their extra demand or desire for the item, that is still a happy trade. Both parties are happy, no bad blood. That is a still, to me, a fair trade. You know. Now that I got that out of the way, let's get started. The first trade ethic slash unspoken rule is trading with kids. The thing about them is that they're not as knowledgeable as we are and they're more susceptible to getting ripped off, especially by vendors and whatnot. Here's the thing, don't rip kids off. It is unacceptable behavior because by you ripping them off and then they knowing about it later on, it turns them into a bully later on where they're gonna eventually rip off little kids. It's just bound to happen because it happened to them before. And aside from that, think about it this way. They are also the future of your community. You're making your community more toxic by doing so. And not only that, if they are so discouraged from the game, you might just lose a potential future player. And what you want is the community to grow bigger and bigger. And by you doing this and hurting the future potential players, your community will only get smaller and therefore devaluing your cards in your area more so. So think about it that way. Also, you'll be labeled as a greedy jerk and you trade your honest reputation for a couple of cards. Do you think that's actually worth it? And to me, I think it's not. If you actually performed in this kind of action, I hope you fail your next job interview. That's all I can say about this. Just be fair to kids, educate them so that they don't get ripped off. And you know, you want your community to grow and therefore these kids, you know, they are actually the potential future. The second unspoken rule of trades is no trade back. Yeah, it seems simple enough, it seems obvious actually that you can't trade back the moment the trade is complete because it's no longer your possession. The moment the exchange is finished, you can expect that there will be no trade back. Whether or not you realize you've just been ripped off or not, it's gonna be hard to actually get the item back. Of course, with an exception to 13 and under, if they're a kid, you can give them the trade back. Don't be unethical just because you successfully ripped the kid off and he realized it. I would recommend that you, you know, redeem yourself by giving them the trade back. It's not like you can't even acquire the card, but if you're really that poor and you need to rip off kids, maybe you have to do some other life choices before you get into this card game. Occasionally, you might be able to get a trade back with your friends, but they're not obligated to do so. And if they're really your friends, they would have told you the value of something anyway. So, you know what, the best way to put this is just don't make a decision you're going to regret. How about that? The third unspoken rule is never interfere with a fair trade. First come first serve buddy. If you see that there's a party making a trade and you could have made the exact same trade for the exact same card that you wanted, well don't do it because why are you sticking your nose in someone else's business? You don't want someone else to interfere with your trade so don't interfere with someone else's trade as long as you know it's fair. If it's an unfair trade and you believe that both players are knowledgeable enough to know that it is unfair, well, it is not your obligation to go save them. That is up to them whether or not they did their research. But if it's a kid, always step in, okay? Don't interfere with trades unless you know it's unfair. Or, fourth rule, you can throw a counter offer that is higher than the current bid. That is always fair. I think it's always fair because supply and demand, you're actually creating more demand, therefore you can pay more for it, as long as it's obviously more. But don't go ahead and just throw a higher counter offer so the other guy backs off and then you throw the same trade offer. That is actually just freaking rude, okay? Don't do that. So don't inf interfere with a fair trade. You can throw higher offers at the trade and uh, don't let kids get ripped off. 
that's that's about it for that one. I know by throwing a counter offer, some people will still be upset because you're still interfering with the trade. But hey, it's items with monetary value, and in terms of monetary value, it's always a pay-to-win situation. And the fifth unspoken rule is people actually expect you to know the value of the goods when you're trading. So a lot of people like don't like to talk about like what's the value just because they want to make the extra buck, maybe milk you and juice you for a little bit more. Okay, fair enough. That is up to them because it is up to the person who owns it to value their own stuff. But that being said, you know, the prices of stuff differ from place to place, people to people, event to event. And events are actually quite important. If you're actually trading at a local store or whatever, usually you can get away with trading at 80% of the actual retail online value. But when it comes to trading at events, selling at events, oh, you can go for way higher than needed. Just because there's an urgency, people want to perform well, and especially if it's a high demand card, you can probably easily like flip that card off for about 100 to 150% of its actual value at the time, just because the demand calls for it. But if you're still unsure, you can consult with someone that knows their stuff, so you know you don't get ripped off. There's no shame in asking. Better safe than sorry. And the sixth uh, unspoken rule is that you're not obligated to trade with anyone. You don't have to follow through with a trade. That's why it's a trade. But I don't get why some people seem to be obsessed with the fact that the trade must complete. Even if it trades unsuccessfully, like you don't complete with a trade, that's nothing to be really embarrassed about. It's just that both parties could not meet each other's demand and that's it. But some people actually feel like embarrassed that they weren't able to trade with this person. Maybe they were supposed to be this easygoing guy and maybe this is somehow affecting their reputation. But honestly, it's not affecting your reputation. In fact, if you do make a stupid deal, it does create a reputation where people kind of think you're a bit of a loser because you can easily get manipulated into crappy trades. And you don't want that. You'd rather trade smart, so be smart about it. So this is actually a funny example. This is actually something that happens quite often. Is that when people post their cards online and you see something, hey, I want this card. And then the other guy is like, what's your offer? It's very funny to see people like shoot really high. In fact, this is not like some sort of high school quiz where you only get one chance at this. Like if they do a one chance at this, they're just planning to rip people off. But you can obviously undershoot and then raise it slowly until you've hit your budget. I think that's a much smarter way. Sure, it makes you seem like, oh, maybe you don't know your stuff in the beginning. But then if my price is so low, then why don't you tell me what you want? Because and then they like, still don't tell you. It's like really silly. Like it's a waste of time on both players and they're just playing mind games with each other that you know what? Let's just come to terms, right? It's just really funny, but <laughs> it's just something that actually happens. The seventh unspoken rule of trading is don't, and it's actually more like common sense, don't take stuff out of the binder unless you have permission. I know some people are like, oh man, let me take a look at this card. Ask for permission first because it's very shady behavior if you actually remove cards out of the binder without permission. And like anything, cards, there's always sleighter hand that can, you know, pocket a card. Uh, just don't do it because uh, you'll be labeled as a thief. And uh, you don't want that to carry with you because no one will ever trade with you ever again. And the number eight thing is don't go flipping through the binder of two parties in the middle of a trade. First of all, it's very shady behavior. It looks like you're trying to pocket something because they're going to be distracted. They're not going to have all of their attention on you. And even if you really want to do so, ask for permission first. And uh, try not to cut ahead of the guy that's already in the middle of the trade. Just because, again, first come, first serve. You're not supposed to interfere with a fair trade. You're not supposed to get in the way of the trade. So there's that. But if anything, always ask for permission. And uh, even then, I would just avoid the scenario altogether. Because you don't want to get mislabeled as a thief. If you get mislabeled as a thief, no one's going to trade with you. No one's going to let you borrow stuff. And uh, basically, no one will trust you. All right, for the final rule here that uh, is kind of kind of controversial to some degree, but not really. But if you're watching someone getting ripped off in a trade and uh, you didn't say anything during the trade, then don't say anything after the trade because at that moment, there's mutual satisfaction. If you, Especially if you noticed it, don't tell him because <laughs> you're just going to ruin his day. I've noticed this, uh, sadly I have to say I've witnessed this firsthand, and I wish I had done something about it back in the day, but I was also new in terms of getting into the competitive scene, and I didn't know the rules of trading, I didn't want to interfere, because that's all I ever knew was don't interfere with trades. But the story goes as this, 
Uh, back about nine years ago, there's a kid that comes in with a dark arm dragon. He has a dark arm dragon that is really nice. It's worth about $200 at the time. It was the Teledad format, the beginning of Teledad format. And holy crap, everyone just flocked to the kid offering him trade after trade after trade until the best offer was put out there. However, the best offer was still like short about a hundred bucks. And the trade was completed. And after the trade was completed, the kid was really happy because he managed to successfully acquire a full extra deck like Stardust, Colossal Fighter, Goyo Guardians, Telekinet, what's that? That Archfiend, Thought Ruler Archfiend, everything, the full package. He was really happy. However, he was still short by about 100 bucks. And one guy had the nerve to go up to the kid and say, dude, you got ripped off by 100 bucks, man. You totally could have gotten more. You could have gotten like five more cards out of that guy. And then from being very happy, the kid immediately was very sad and was hoping for a trade back. And the guy said, no, I'm not trading back. You already got the cards now. And I don't want those cards anymore. And the kid started to cry. Like, that was some of the crappiest thing I've witnessed in this game. I didn't say anything. I couldn't get the card. I didn't know anything better. If I knew back in the day, I would have intervened. Of course, that would have made like a lot of people kind of get angry at me. It's like, why are you interfering with the trade? Because the rules of trade are never really spoken. And that's why I'm bringing this situation to light. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, learned a thing or two regarding trading, or you want to add more, leave it down in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up. If you guys enjoyed this video, by all means, hit the subscribe button for more content. I'm actually working on a collab with Team Samurai X1 right now. It's a secret. Even he doesn't know he's part of this collab, but we'll get to see some pretty awesome stuff. Hopefully, I get to finish it within this week. But, um... Also, shout out to Imperium Duelist for providing me with this calculator case. If you want to put your calculator, your, your whatever, your T, whatever calculator, you can put your dueling ID in here, everything, dice. It's a very, very solid piece. You can definitely check out Imperium Duelist. And as always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MSD.TV and I'll see you next time.